Hey, what's up everyone? It's Steph from Steph Lee Films. I'm not sure if you have noticed on my table, I have this device lying around for a long time and it is my iPad Pro. And in today's video, I will show you three very useful tips on how you can use your iPad to integrate with your live streaming setup and increase your productivity and production quality. Quick disclaimer here though, there will be some additional costs involved, mainly with apps purchasing. But as you know by now, I usually don't like to spend unnecessary money on top of what I already spent on my live streaming setup. But I personally feel that these costs are very minor costs in comparison to what it can do for you. And for the cost versus benefits, I think it's pretty worth the investment. So without further ado, let's dive right in. First up, using the iPad as a camera for your A10 Mini Pro. In my previous videos, I have talked about using different types of cameras for your live stream. DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, webcams, or even just the inbuilt camera on your laptop or computer. Do you also know that you can use your iPad as a camera view as well? First, you will need to get a Lightning Digital AV adapter, which is the Lightning to HDMI adapter, and it costs about $75 Sing dollars from the Apple Store. So once you connect the adapter to your iPad, connect a Lightning cable at the side to power up the adapter. Then connect a HDMI cable to your A10 Mini Pro input. For this example, I will connect it to input 2. From your HDMI output to the external monitor, you can see that your iPad is working pretty well as a camera view. The second usage for the iPad which I will talk about is using it as a second or extended display to your Mac. There are a few ways to do this. The first way is to use the native Apple app Sidecar. Important point to note though, please ensure that your Mac must meet the minimum system requirements for this, which is running the latest Mac OS Catalina and your iPad running iPad OS 13 or later. However, like many others, I personally don't really fancy the new Mac OS Catalina and I have not personally upgraded to that OS yet because of the many issues surrounding the new OS till date. However, if you are running Catalina, Using the Sidecar app is pretty straightforward and I will put the official link from apple.com below and you should be able to follow the instructions to do that. So what if you are like me, not on Catalina, what options do we have? For myself, I use this app called Duet Display which costs about 15 Singapore dollars on the App Store. The minimum system requirements are more forgiving for this app compared to Sidecar and you can even use an Android tablet to run this iOS app in a way. So you will need Macs running Mac OS 10.9 or later, Windows PCs running Windows 7 or later, iPhones and iPads running iOS 10 or later, Android and Chromebook devices running Android 7.1 or later. Setting up Duet Display is very simple and straightforward. First, you will need to purchase the Duet Display app from App Store. Then download the client's software for your Mac directly from the Duet Display website. Start the Duet Display app on your iPad and you will be greeted with this screen. Connect your iPad to your Mac via a Lightning to USB cable. And once connected, you can change the settings for your Duet Display app to tune the frame rate, resolution and display quality to your personal preferences. So now the question is, why would I need an extended display for my A10 Mini Pro setup? Remember the ATEM software control panel that we run on our laptop during live stream? Well, this window takes up pretty much the entire display on your Mac, making your Mac turn into pretty much an ATEM software control panel permanently. You can't really do other stuff on your laptop. Well, you can by constantly minimizing the control panel and popping it up again when you have to. So now that we have the extended display on the iPad, you can drag the ATEM software control panel onto the iPad and using it exclusively just for controlling the ATEM Mini Pro while you still have full access to your MacBook's computer functions. Pretty useful, right? The third usage for the iPad which I will talk about is using it as an external control panel for your ATEM Mini Pro. As you can see from my iPad app Touch OSC here, I have buttons that I can touch and this directly controls the buttons on my A10 Mini Pro according to how I set it up. Here we are talking about several different applications that work with one another to create this customized control panel worked on your iPad. 
something like a stream deck or a MIDI controller, but much, much more customizable. I will be creating a separate, more technical video later on to talk more in detail how to create these buttons for specific users. But here I will briefly just introduce this application setup. We will need the following apps, ATEM OSC, Touch OSC, and the Touch OSC Editor. So how are these applications related to one another? To keep it simple to understand, the Touch OSC app resides in your iPad, which you hold on your hands. When you press buttons on the Touch OSC app, these buttons send commands to the ATEM OSC software, which resides in your laptop which in turn sends commands to your ATEM Mini Pro console. And on the back end, the Touch OSC editor is the application that edits the layouts and functions of these buttons that you see here on the Touch OSC app. Sounds complicated? Well, it takes a little bit of time to absorb everything, but once you get the whole picture, it is pretty straightforward. So what I will do is I will run through a quick tutorial on how to create some simple buttons on the Touch OSC setup and hopefully along the way you will understand how all these work together. Before we start, make sure your laptop and iPad are connected to the same network. So first we will have to purchase the Touch OSC app from the Apple App Store for about seven Sing dollars. Open the app and click on Connections OSC. Under Found Host, you can see my MacBook Pro here, Steph's MacBook Pro ATEM OSC. So click on this and you will be connected. Then on your laptop, open the ATEM OSC app. Where you can see that most of the stuff here are empty, so you will have to key in the switcher IP address yourself. You can find your ATEM Mini Pro IP address by going to the software control panel and click on ATEM software control connection. Then copy the manual IP address here. Go back to your ATEM OSC and paste the IP address. You can see the switcher name coming on and the button turning from red to green. For the OSC out IP address, it will be the one on your Touch OSC app, which in my case is 192.168.1.176. So now that you've got your Touch OSC app on your iPad ready and connected to your ATEM OSC app on your laptop, we are ready to create some buttons using the Touch OSC editor. So now I'm going to show you a simple example of how to create some simple buttons using the Touch OSC editor on your laptop and sync it to your Touch OSC app on the iPad. First, open up the Touch OSC editor. I'm using an iPad Pro, so I will select iPad Pro here. For orientation, I'm going to use it horizontally, so I will select horizontal here. Then right click on the space here and create a push button. Resize and move it accordingly. Here I will uncheck Auto because I want to input my own instructions for this particular button. You can find all the codes here in the ATEM OSC app under Help OSC Addresses. So I'm going to use this red button as the punching button to trigger camera 1. Copy this line of code slash ATEM slash program slash 1 and go back to your Touch OSC editor and paste it here. So now I will go ahead to duplicate three more buttons for cameras 2, 3, and 4. And then I will create a vertical label and name them accordingly. So once you're done, click Save As and I will name it Test OSC for Cameras. Next, click on the Sync button here to tell the editor to replicate this layout onto the Touch OSC app on your iPad. So on your iPad, you have to click on Layout here and click Add. You can see under Found Host, Staff BMP. 
then you will see your newly created layout test OSC for cameras here. Click done and there it is, the layout has been replicated. So now you can see when I touch the buttons on the iPad, it sends direct signals to the A10 Mini Pro and responds accordingly. Question, I know some of you will be asking, if I can press the buttons on the A10 Mini Pro console itself, why would I go through all the trouble to create software, iPad, laptop and everything just to create a similar looking interface on my iPad? Okay, the answer is simply what I've just done is just skimming the surface of this super powerful app. Just the tip of the iceberg. What kind of buttons you create on the editor is all up to your personalized needs for your setup. As I've mentioned always before, each individual setup for a live stream for different corporate clients varies very differently. So one very powerful use is to set up buttons that corresponds directly to macros on your A10 Mini Pro. Remember macros? Remember I did a macro tutorial in one of my previous video here, showing you how to fade out music professionally, like slowly going off instead of a sharp decrease. So now instead of going into the ATEM software control panel to click on macros to trigger that particular macro, you can assign it to a simple button on the touch OSC. And once you touch the button, the macro runs automatically and the volume goes down smoothly. Again, I've always said this, the extent to what devices can do is only limited to your creativity. So there you have it. I hope this video has given you a great insight on how you can use your iPad which is lying around to increase your productivity on your A10 Mini Pro and how it can greatly streamline and add value to your entire setup by making life easier and automating buttons by the touch of some buttons which is customized to your needs. As I've always said in my videos, many things can happen during a live stream and it's always good practice to be 200% prepared before the event so you're 100% ready on the job. Simplifying complicated functions using one-touch buttons make your job much easier and decreases your chance of screwing up your live event. Before I end this video, I would like to say it really means a lot to me if you found the information I've shared today useful and if you can give this video a like and share it with your friends so it encourages me to continue making such videos for you. On the other hand, I've said this a few times, I've said this many times, if you don't like this video, do feel free to give me comments below or give a thumbs down so I can continue to work on my future video content to bring you something that everyone likes. If you want to learn more about photography and videography on this channel or get tips to improve your A10 Mini Pro setup like this episode, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. And as always, if you have any questions, please let me know 